Today, let's look inside Apologia's Earth Science. I'm gonna share with you guys what all is included in this science curriculum, what our thoughts are now that we have completed it after a year, and all of my favorite and least favorite components. So let's get started. We've been using Apologia science resources from the beginning and absolutely love them. The Earth Science book was recently released and it is no exception to the rule of loving it. It is laid out a little different than the other science curriculums. Most of the other ones are on one singular topic and then you're diving very deep into that topic. Because this is covering earth science and earth incorporates a lot of things, this allowed you to kind of study a lot of different things. So we spent some time studying about space and then other times studying about water and the water cycle. Other points talking about habitats and food chains and things like that. Let me show you what I mean. Inside the earth science book, you'll notice there are 14 lessons. We start out by talking about the observable universe. So talking about a lot of things with space, life in the habitable zones, the spheres of the earth, the mapping your world, talking about the geosphere, making and shaping the land, the hydrosphere, the atmosphere, climate and weather, weather forecasting, the biosphere, the cycles of life, the unique places on earth, and God in creation. Each lesson is designed to take you roughly two weeks to complete. They are divided into nice little sections with activities that you can do. We really enjoyed a lot of these activities this year, and I love the fact that they have these orange blocks for review questions. So they kind of make natural stopping points as you read throughout your chapter. The pictures, as always in this book, were absolutely phenomenal, and I love the fact that it always ties back to scripture and God's creation. My kids really enjoyed learning about the different spheres of the earth and getting to see that bigger picture and then zooming in to focus on each of these in their own separate chapter. A few additional resources in the back of the book that you'll find in the appendix is a supply list for each of the lessons when it comes to the different experiments. Word pronunciations, which is very helpful when we're talking about some of these technical terms. Also, remember how I pointed out times where they ask you, do you remember? And they ask you comprehension questions. Here are all the answers to those. So if for you as a mom would like that little refresher, you can definitely find that back here. If you are looking to do this for your science, all you need to have is the textbook for your student and then any supplies you might want to complete the experiments. But additional things that they have available to make your life a little bit easier or to tailor it to you and your family's needs is they do have an audio option of this book. They also have the ability to purchase student journals. You can do these for each of your kids or purchase one to do as a group. These offer additional charts and cutouts, copy work, coloring pages, and more. I got a science kit from Nature's Workshop Plus that was all of the science experiments, or at least most of the science experiment supplies. What was nice about this is they are in individual Ziploc bags and they are easily labeled with lesson one, what supplies are in the bag, and the few things that you might also need to get in addition to that. I love the fact that I didn't have to scrounge around looking for all of the supplies to do these science experiments. As we have done for many years, but in case you don't know, we meet with a friend every other week to go through and have the kids share what they learned in that chapter and to do the science experiments together. Before doing the system, I never got around to doing science experiments. And now we do a science experiment at least every chapter. The kids love it. The moms love the fact that we can share the cost when it comes to expenses of pulling together the different supplies. And we like the fact that we can make our kids happy by getting to have these hands-on learning opportunities. But let's talk about the science experiments and the earth science. There were some really fun science experiments when it came to earth science. One was creating your own Goldilocks zone, which you'll have to read more about that to know exactly what that is. We also did a really fun experiment with starburst chews as we learned how rocks are formed and how they're sedimentary rock and it all combines. We also use saltine crackers to teach us about tectonic plates and how they interact with one another. And we made our own expanding universe putty, which of course the kids all loved. One of the things that was a little bit different about this earth science book than some of the other ones is it had a project that you worked on from the beginning, I wanna say chapter two or three, 
all the way till the end of the book. And this was creating your own world, your own globe. You would take this and start by making a paper mache circle. You were going to then add on the different continents. When you learned about longitude and latitude, you would add those lines. When we learned about the equator, you would add that in. When we talked about the hydrosphere and the water, you would add that into it. So it was this ongoing project. Unfortunately, we did not partake in that ongoing project because it started out as a paper mache thing and I am highly allergic to latex. So I was unable to participate in that experiment. However, we did get a cork globe. I will post a picture of it here and link it down below for you guys that we were able to do a lot of those things with. We were able to go in and talk about the different areas, where the equator was, where different continents were. We didn't add to it, but it was a great visual. But I think if you're able, doing that extra project would have been extensive and probably a little complicated, but I really think they did break it down into pretty good baby steps if it's something that you wanna do with you and your kids. There was a lot of talking about different scientists and what they do, about a geologist, what they study, how they work, talking about mineralists and so many more different ones. I, my kids really enjoyed learning about all the different kinds of scientists and I really loved the fact that they were learning so much about weather. It was neat to be able to see them apply those things on a day-to-day -day basis and they've definitely had those lessons stick with them as I hear them talking about oh, this day must be a high pressure day or a low pressure day. And now they finally understand, and I do too, how to understand what the weathermen are talking about before they break it down, you know, for the layman's folk. Overall, my personal opinion, I really enjoyed it. My oldest boys didn't like it as much as they liked chemistry and physics. I think that was just a little bit more hands-on, a little bit more tangible for them. My girls really love this. I probably would recommend this for a little bit earlier in the age range, probably more for that fourth grade and under. It was not too easy for my older boys, but it just didn't pique their interest as far as the topic as much. I would also say it might be a great one to get started on in the younger years because it does touch on a bunch of little topics and then you can see what kind of stuck out to your child the most. And if it was the astronomy stuff, then next year you could do the astronomy one. If it was the botany stuff, you can dig into that more. It could be a really good jumping off board to help you decide what your children are interested in and to dig into that further and deeper in the following years. I would definitely give it a 10 out of 10. And if you wanna see my reviews on other Apologia Science resources, be sure to check out this playlist here. Talk to you guys later, bye.